Here's a quick example of testing symmetry in a graph, a polar graph, from a, an equation involving r and theta. Um, we're going to test for three um, reasons for symmetry. And the way I say that, three reasons, is important. Um, this is not going to, we won't uh, be able to disprove any kind of symmetry. The thing about polar is there's some sneaky ways that symmetries can show up. Um, and so if somebody says, oh, I think it has a certain kind of symmetry, our tests won't necessarily disprove that. But they will find some reasons for certain kinds of symmetry. Okay. And we're going to do it just like, the, just like a book problem. What we're going to do is we're going to test for more obvious than not, I don't know, obvious isn't a great word, but for the, the simplest reason for why we would have uh, symmetry about the polar axis. And that's just the fancy polar name for the x-axis. The line theta equals y over 2, or sorry, it's pi over 2, which is just a fancy name for the y-axis. And the pole, which is just the origin, And symmetry around the pole just means shoot through the pole. Well, that really means a 180 degree uh, rotational symmetry. And that doesn't need to be a subscript now, does it? A superscript now, does it? 180 degree rotation. OK. And here's the tests. And again, these are not um, the only ways these symmetries can, sh can show up. So the first test is the polar axis. This didn't show up in the in this other the other video I made about eight sine three theta. Here we replace theta with minus theta because that flips across the polar axis, the x-axis, and we see is the r unchanged. Okay, so let's do that. Our old r. is just this formula. That's for comparison. The new r will be the r that corresponds to our new theta. I'm having trouble with math mode today, sorry. OK, so I plug in. This is very much like testing odd or even for a function of y equals f of x. I plug in a new theta. It's going to be across the x-axis. And then I see that's going to be some, some number. It's not like it's not a number. But the question is, is it the same as that old number? Well, yeah, sure. Because one of the fundamental things we need to remember about cosine is it's an even function. Minus sine just goes away. OK, yeah, that is equal to the old r. OK, so the answer is yes. And so we get an x-axis, or another, in other words, polar axis symmetry. OK, and we'll, I'm going to show you the graph of this. The computer's going to help us do the graph of this in a minute, and we'll, we'll confirm that. Okay, now what about the y-axis, or if we want to be really religious about always using polar terminology, theta equals pi over 2, or in other words. But you know what? We really know that's just the y-axis. Okay. So what we do is we replace, and we get out of math mode. We replace theta with pi minus theta. And again, ask, is r unchanged? OK. So the old r is still this guy. New r, OK, so instead of putting just theta, we put in pi minus theta. Well, there is an identity for cosine of pi minus theta. We can do some simplification on that. But when that really corresponds on the unit circle for flipping across the y-axis, which is why we're doing this, to test the symmetry. And unfortunately, that changes that to a minus. Okay, and that is not the same r. It's just not going to be the same at all. Okay, and it's not either either even minus r, which would lead to a secret sort of symmetry, but it's just nothing good. Okay, so no obvious symmetry. Now again, this doesn't prove there isn't some other secret way that there's a y-axis symmetry, but it seems let's just say unlikely to have y-axis symmetry. And at least we had we didn't detect any.
Okay. Now, symmetry about the pole. In other words, shooting through the origin. Or in other words, a 180 degree rotation. Okay. Where what we do there is a little trickier. We actually look at r and we replace r with minus r. We're using the minus r trick here. So here we replace r with minus r. This isn't the only way that a 180 degree rotation symmetry could show up, but this is one way and it's worth worth trying. Okay. So now this is a little a little weird. We start out with this equation. Okay. Can we actually replace r with minus r? and get the same equation is minus r is does that also work you might think how could that possibly work i'll tell you in a minute it definitely doesn't work here though if r is this with a plus sign then minus r is not that it's just not the same thing okay and the answer is no okay so i'm just going to make a parenthetical when this does work is usually when it's an equation like um, like r squared if it was r squared was 1 over 2 plus cosine theta, it would totally work because then minus r and r would have the same would fit into the same equation. Okay, so usually this this thing works when there's r squareds. It doesn't work here. Now that doesn't mean there's not a 180 degree symmetry, but we don't see any any easy reason why there is one. Okay, so all we're detecting is the x-axis symmetry. So let's actually graph this thing. Let me uh, copy and paste that, and let's just do a quick plot 2 dipolar, and it turns out, we're going to discover this later, it's actually an ellipse. And we study conics uh, in some depth in the spring. It's actually an ellipse, and it happens to be an ellipse that is symmetric about the x-axis, the polar axis, but definitely not about the th theta equals pi over 2 direction, which is the y-axis. And it's not al also not symmetry 180, like if you take this point here and you shoot through the origin, oh, that's a lot further out. It's not symmetric in terms of that. Um, it does have a secret symmetry about this axis that's displaced from the origin, but that's much, much harder to find in polar coordinates.